So, uh, good morning, everyone. And to today, uh, we're going to talk mostly about intersection types. Uh, I, before that, I wanted to go a little, a little bit, talk a little bit review from from last time, and just to uh, to get a sense, did have people looked at some of the exercises in the notes? Or uh, um, raise your hand if you've done uh, some of the exercises. <coughs> and, uh, who who's has anyone implemented the uh, the type inference algorithm or the bidirectional typing? Okay. Okay. But y you should all try to to implement. The, I recommend at least doing the bidirectional typing. I, it's a, it's a fun to implement. Uh, but so I wanted to just look at one of the exercises from, from last time that's in the notes. Um, so it's a question about, uh, so it's, it involves the church booleans. Uh, have people seen the, this, uh, the church encodings, lambda calculus? So uh, in simply type lambda calculus, we can represent <coughs> the booleans by this type, yoda, yoda, arrow, yoda, arrow, yoda, right? And, and it has two elements, true and false. True is lambda x, lambda y, x. False is lambda x, lambda y, y. Now we're gonna look at this in the, the type refinement system that we defined last time, where we have some refinements of the atomic type yoda and some subtyping relationship. So here I'm just gonna take it to be the the simplest case, so you have, two, uh, you have two atoms, bottom and top, and bottom is below top. <coughs> so, okay, first uh, warm-up question is, you know, how many refinements are there of, of beta? So how many are such that R refines beta? Eight. So there are eight refinements, and, and can you name uh, some of them? <coughs> so there's eight, which is two to the power of three, because, okay, so we have bottom arrow, bottom arrow, bottom, bottom arrow, bottom arrow, top. top or bottom, and okay, we're counting in binary. Now, the next question, I want you to start thinking about Okay, the, what refinements can you assign to true and false? So uh, the question is, you know, solve for R. Now, where, let's say the first case, <coughs> what are the R such that true has type R? And false has type R. So, so, so d can you find any examples of, of such types? <coughs> bottom arrow, bottom arrow, bottom. So let's maybe I'll use. So we have bottom arrow, bottom arrow, bottom. Top, top, top. Um, you can think about, do any of these types imply the other? So is there any, we have bottom arrow, bottom arrow, bottom. 
are there any types? Is this a subtype of any of the other types here? Of two. So bottom arrow, bottom arrow, top. Is bottom arrow, bottom arrow, bottom a subtype of bottom arrow, bottom arrow, top? Y yes, because bottom is a subtype of top. And, and these, the, um, and the rest is, is, is equal. So, so two is also a type of, of, it's both a type of true and it's a type of false. And maybe we can just you know, think about, about this. To, I mean, to, if true, to check that true has this type, well, we assign x the type bottom, we assign y the type bottom. Now we have to check that x has the type top. Well, x, we assumed it has the type bottom. Bottom is the subtype of top. We apply the subsumption rule. So true has this type, and the same reasoning works for false. OK, any other types that uh, any other refinements are, which true and false both have the type R? Everything with a top at the end, so that's so maybe we can check one one of these. So bottom arrow, top arrow, top. Does true have that type? Uh, again, we assume x has type bottom, y has type top, then x has type top. Okay, that's fine. Does false have that type? Uh, we assume x has type bottom. Y has type top. We assumed Y has type top, so Y has type top. OK. And 6 is okay, also OK. OK. Uh, any, any more? Probably not. <laughs> OK. Now, what about? What about R such that true has type R, but false doesn't have type R? Of the ones which are left. So bottom arrow, top arrow, bottom. We can check that true has this type. Assume X has type bottom, <coughs> Y has type top. Well, X has type bottom. Does false have the type? We assume x has type bottom, y has type top, and now we want to show that y has type <coughs> bottom, but uh, top is not a subtype of bottom, so we can't apply the subsumption rule. So false doesn't have that type. Uh, and now, okay, the remaining cases. What are the r such that, well, true does not have type r, but false has type r. Top, arrow, bottom, top. That's the symmetric case. And then, well, there's only one thing left, which is you know, there a refinement which neither true nor false has the, has that type. And that's the, the thing which is left. Top, arrow, top, arrow, bottom. We can't give that type to true or false. So it doesn't have any closed, there's no closed term that's inhab that inhabits this type in the, in the language. OK. So, so now we're going to talk about intersection types. Uh, going away from this very simple uh, type, type refinement system that we looked at last time, and it was very simple, but I still think it's a useful exercise to, to, to work through it because there's some things, there's some interesting or important principles that we see there about type refinement systems. So for example, here, just we saw the basic fact that one term can have many different types. In the, in the uh, extrinsic or the, the Curry view of typing, we have true and false, which are Booleans. 
they have this underlying type IRI, IRI, but they also have multiple refinements. So true has this, uh, true has, oh, sorry about that. Okay. True has the green type, bottom arrow, top arrow, bottom. It also has all of the red types. And false also has uh, this type, top arrow, bottom arrow, bottom, and it also has all of the red types. So it, it has, can have multiple types. And we also had this example from last time that lambda xx could have the type animal, uh, animal, and it could also have the type vegetable, uh, vegetable, and this was maybe an issue because none of the, uh, neither of these types is a subtype of the other. So it didn't have principal uh, types. So then we saw that that wasn't necessarily a problem because we could compute principal type schemes or we could, we could use bidirectional typing where we, talk where we see that there's some, sub, some subclass of terms, the neutral terms, which have principal types, and that was enough sometimes. But in any case, there was the, the idea that a term can have more than one type. So intersection types, are kind of just internalizing that idea and letting you explicitly say that, well, lambda xx has this type, it has this type, so it has both types. It has the intersection type. So let me define for you ba basically what, what uh, you know, the, the, the formal rules for intersection types. We're going to extend our, our type system now with a new, new way of forming uh, refinement types. And first, you know, these are the refinement rules. First, I'm going to be, be begin by, by telling you the rules of, uh, for performing the, the intersection types. And so, so what does it say? You know, if we have R1, which is a refinement of A, and we have R2, which is a refinement of A, then we can form the intersection, okay? There's also a unit case, a, a zero array version of intersection, which is, is called top for any, for any type. Uh, we can form the, the zero array intersection. Top is a refinement of, of A. Uh, but so the important thing to see here is that we're only going to talk about intersection of two refinements of the same type. So here, I formed the intersection of animal or animal and vegetable or vegetable, which each of these is, of course, is a refinement of I arrow I. What I'm not allowed to do is take something like something like this, right? Where animal or animal is a refinement of I arrow I and vegetable is a refinement of I. And these are two different types. So I'm going to rule that out in the, the when I'm talking about intersection types, it's always about the intersection of two, two, uh, two types which refine the same, the same type. And the, intuitive, the intuition behind that again was that, well, R1 and R2 are two properties of, of A's. And so we can say that both of the properties hold. Uh, but if they're properties of two different things, it, it's, it's hard to make sense of what exactly the intersection would say. So this is the, the formation rule for, for intersection types. And then these are the typing rules. So the introduction rule basically just, just captures that intuition that 
we gather multiple typings of the same term. <coughs> so T has an intersection type R1 intersects R2. If T has type R1 and T also has the R2, has the type R2. And of course, what's important here is where it's the same T. We're talking about one term having multiple types. Then there's elimination rules, which just let us project out the different uh, types that we're, we're, we assign to this term. So if T has the type R1 intersect R2, then it has the type R1. And if T has the type R1 intersect R2, then it also has the type R2. Okay. Uh, then there's also, I didn't write here, the rules for, for top. So top is, is, a, is a trivial refinement, which every term of type A has the refinement type top of A. So I, I'm writing it like this. You could also think of it as, some, as like this. You could, you could think of top as, as being A. Uh, but, but formally, I want to treat it as a, as a zero array intersection. So I'm going to write top. It's going to be a unit for, for the intersection. So. Uh, we're going to want things like, like that R intersect top is, is equivalent to R. But so let me finish here. I get, this is the intersection. Um, this is the zero inter intersection, the introduction rule for, for top. And then what's the, the elimination rule? <coughs> Well, there is no elimination rule, right? So it's the zero array. It's the zero array version of intersection. Is, uh, intersection is binary. It has, it combines two types, and so it has two projections for each of the uh, the types. Top combines zero types, so it has no projections. There's no elimination rule. Okay, those are the typing rules. I haven't I haven't mentioned subtyping. I'm going to talk about subtyping now. So last time, maybe let me recall from last time, we had that we, we have so we assumed we had some, uh, some atomic ordering, some ordering on the atoms, and then, OK, an atom P is, is a subtype of Q at the atomic type I, just if by assumption. And then, let me write a little bit bigger. <coughs> R1. subtype of S, uh, R1 arrow S1 is a subtype of R2 arrow S2 at the type A arrow B if R2 is a subtype of R1 at A and S1 is a subtype of S2 at B. Uh, these were the subtyping rules from last time. Very simple. Uh, for intersection types, it's, it turns out it's a little bit more complicated, the, the subtyping relation. So, so first, okay, wh what are some sensible rules that we might have? So <coughs> we have an intersection, R1 intersect R2. Well, it's a subtype of R1. So this is the more precise type. The intersection is more precise than, than each of its projections. R1 intersect R2 is a subtype of R2. And then, uh, how do we show that something is a subtype of an intersection? S is a subtype of R1 intersect R2. 
if it's a subtype of both. And you can see these, these are very similar to the, this is very, this subtyping rule is very similar to the introduction rule for intersections. And these subtyping rules are very similar to the elimination rule uh, for intersections. Likewise, we're gonna have a rule that says that every type is a subtype of top. Now, here I was being careful about indexing indexing these by, by the underlying type that's, that's being refined. Let me be careful again. R1, R1 is a, here is a refinement of A. R2 is also a refinement of A. This is a refinement of A. Everything is, is actually going on at the type A. We could also index, we could put the A here also like uh, I was doing there. Uh, just to be unambiguous that this is a refining top is a refinement of A. Top, top uh, A is a refinement of A. Okay, so that looks pretty simple. And there's just a, a, you know, there's a correspondence between the introduction rules and the introduction elimination rules and on the other hand the, the subtyping rules. It actually turned out not to be enough because we actually want more subtyping relationships to hold. So, and so here's, here's another one. Let me, let me go here. So, so it turns out we also want this rule. So there's this distributivity principle if we, have, if we take an intersection of function types and, and they have the same <coughs> domain, so we have a function which has the type S arrow, arrow R1 intersect S arrow R2, <coughs> that's supposed, that should be a subtype of S arrow R1 intersect R2. Um, and the, you know, the intuitive reason for that, again, thinking about these as, as uh, properties and entailment between properties. If we have a function which will take any s to an to an r1, so it will take it will take something which is an s to something which is an r1, and it will also take something which is an s to something which is an r2. Here I, I said and because I'm reading the intersection as a conjunction of properties. <laughs> then if we give it an s, then it will it will return something which is both an R1 and an R2. So there's this distributivity principle that, that we add to the subtyping relationship. And there's a similar, there's the zero array version of this as well. So top is a subtype of S arrow top, where now this is at at a type, at a function type A or B, where now top here is the top of the, the function type A or B, and top here is the uh, at the type B. And intuitively, this is this is sound because if you have a function of type A or B, so we know nothing about the function other than that it's the function from A or B. Well. If you give it an S, it will return something, uh, which is a B. We don't know anything. Uh, we don't know anything about it other than it's, that it's a B. Uh, so this is the zero array version of this. And 
so, so we actually we want to have these two, two principles to add them to the sub uh, add them to the subtyping relationship. I'm going to talk later at, at the end. I'm going to talk about situations where, actually, where we don't want this. But but in this case, in the in the simply typed lambda calculus, these rules are sound and and, and we want to have them. Uh, but they see, but they make the subtyping relationship more complicated because well, we add this rule. Uh, we have these rules, but but these are really axioms. So we also need to ha add. We also need to add a transitivity. So if R1 is a subtype of R2 and R2 is a subtype of R3, then R1 is a subtype of R3. Uh, and last time, I, I, I said that when you take just these rules, this turns out to, this is reflexive and transitive. If you just, the, the relation which is inductively defined by these rules turns out to be reflexive and transitive, and you can prove that by induction on A. Uh, here, well, okay, we can show that this is reflexive, but now we add these axioms, it's no longer transitive, we need to add the extra, we need to add, we need to close under, under transitivity, we take the transitive uh, closure. So, okay, so subtyping becomes more complicated. So now I want to go back to this idea, which I mentioned last time, but I want to talk about it a bit more now, which is that in many situations you can reduce subtyping to typing. You can see, you can see subtyping as really hiding implicit eta expansion. So, Let me recall the idea there was that we have This is the this is the general subsumption rule, what's called the subsumption rule. T is a term which has an underlying type A, but it also has a refinement type R. R is a is a subtype of S at A. Then the term has the type S. This was this was an inference rule which we took it as part of the type system. But then we saw in some sense it's redundant because we can reduce it to this atomic subsumption. where now we're only considering terms of atomic type. So this uh, sub-atomic. If we have this rule, <coughs> then we can derive, in a sense we can derive this, not exactly though, what we can derive is you know, with the same premises, We can show that the iterated eta expansion of T has type S. Where this was defined, again, this, so this is defined, the eta expansion by induction, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's a refinement of A. Yeah, so I mean here, j to, m maybe I can show just how you, you know, suppose that S is a refinement of, of A, did I say refinement of B? I meant refinement of A. S is a refinement of A, and R1 and R2 are refinements of B. <coughs> well, then we can reform S arrow R1 is a refinement of A arrow B. 
and SRR2 is also a refinement of ARB, so we can form their intersection, that's a refinement of ARB, and also we can form the intersection of these, R1 intersect R2 is a refinement of B, so then we can take S arrow R1 intersect R2 is going to be a refinement of <coughs> ARB. So, okay, so, so back to here with the, the subtyping. Uh, so, so the idea is w we can we can take subsumption. We can reduce it to to atomic subsumption by through eight expansion. So again, eight expansion is defined by induction on the underlying simple type. And in the atomic case. Uh, it does nothing. And then in the function case, it's going to be lambda x, take the eta expansion at A of x, we apply t to it, and then we eta expand at B. I define this last time, this iterated eight expansion, we're going to use the same definition now in the case of, of intersection types. And we do that because, you know, we, ca we can do that because we haven't changed the underlying language of simple types, right? So that's, that's another, you know, principle. We, we've, we've extended the language of refinements. We've added these intersections. But we haven't changed the, the underlying uh, language, which is a simply type lambda calculus with one, one uh, uh, base type. And so the eight expansion is defined by induction on types, on the simple types. It's not defined by induction on, on refinement types. That's an important point. But so, okay, so, so the, the claim is that this rule th is admissible if, so if you have this atomic subsumption, then you can derive the higher order subsumption uh, with eight expansion. So I'm, you know, I claim that that continues to hold in the, the system with, with intersection types. I'm just going to show you an example of how we can derive, we can you know, derive in a sense, we can derive this distributivity principle through through typing. So how does that work? So ah I have a trick. Second here, yeah. So, <coughs> this is the general rule that R is a subtype of S at A, just in case, if you assume X has type R, then you can show that the eight expansion of X has type S. Uh, so you know, we can prove that this is true in, 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 in this case in the system, but, but let me give you an example of that. So how do we derive this distributivity principle through eight expansion? So. Assume that X has the type on the left. Now we want to show that the eight expansion of X at the type A arrow B 
has the type S arrow R1 intersect R2. And this thing is by definition what I wrote on the right. Which is, uh, oh, sorry, we have a lambda. Oh. Alpha conversion <laughs> failure. Lambda y eta b x applied to <coughs> eta a y. Okay, so we have this is a term we want to show has this type. And what can we do? All we can, well, we're, we're, what we're going to do is just we, we have a lambda abstraction, we're going to apply the abstraction rule. So we keep this hypothesis. And we add, we extend the context with y of type S. And now we show that this thing has the type R1 intersect <coughs> R2. OK. Now, We want to show this intersection type on the right. Well, we can just apply the intersection introduction rule. And so in the same context, uh, we're going to show that the same term has the type R1. And we're going to show that the same term has the type R2. And let me take this case and, OK, so we want to show in the same context again. Right, so let's, you know, we're going to just take one step of the induction, so we're going to get, we're going to just go back to the, um, get rid of the remaining eight expansions, so let me. I was trying to do something more general, so I didn't describe it in the best way, but okay, so we can show that X has the type SR R1 because well we can project this is applying the intersection elimination rule to Project the first component, and then, well, we know that y has type S, and so we can apply the application rule and get that this has type R1. Why 
Yeah, sorry, I, I was trying to do something more, I was trying to, I was trying to prove this to you, I think, and I, um, I was trying, to, yeah, I made it needlessly complicated. So, okay, if you forget about the ADAS, yeah, maybe, I, okay, I'm gonna redo the example just without the, without the, the inner ADAS. So I'm gonna do so just one level of ADA expansion so you can see the, the idea. So lambda y, x applied to y, okay? So we're just gonna take one ADA expansion instead of the iterated ADA expansion. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So so uh, what I was trying to do because I wasn't looking at my notes, I was actually trying to prove this to you. So you can do that as an exercise, uh, but we're ju I'm just gonna show you how to derive this distributivity principle by doing one eight expansion. And we take x and we eight expand it once, we get lambda y, x, y. Now we're gonna show this, that it has the type S R R R1 intersect R2, and you can see that this is gonna work. So you know, here we applied the lambda rule. We introduced that y has type S, now we want to show that x of y has type R1 intersect R2. We apply the intersection introduction rule. So we show that x, y has type R1, x, y has type R2. And, and now we're, we're here and we're going to apply the application rule. We have to show that x has type S or R1 and that's where we use the elimination rule, the first projection. And then you know, here we use the first projection. In the other case, we're going to use the second projection. So, there's, you know, this is, this is a general a uh, general property that, that holds in many systems that uh, subtyping is equivalent to typing of the identity or typing of eta expansion. And you can get rid of subsumption, high order subsumption, you can get rid of it or reduce it to atomic subsumption through eta expansion. So, okay. Let's see now. So now, an example of, of subtyping. So, so again, we're going to talk a bit about the, the, the church boolean. And we listed eight different refinements before in the um, in the, in the system without intersection types. It turns out that there's, there's actually five different equivalence classes of, if you look at the refinements of this uh, type now in the intersection type refinement system, there's gonna be five different equivalence classes of, of uh, refinements. So I'm gonna list them here. So. Okay, we have top, which is the maximal refinement. Okay, 
I'm going to give them names, <coughs> and then I'll... So, true and false, uh, before I was, I, you know, I was naming terms True is the lambda x, lambda y, x false is lambda x, lambda y, y. Uh, but I'm going to overload the notation for the refinement bottom arrow top arrow bottom, which is the refinement of, of beta. The, the overloading is kind of, um, you know, for two it is lucky because before we thought this was the type that true had that type, but false did not have that type. Uh, now false, here, I'm going to take it to stand for the type bo top, arrow bottom, arrow bottom. Again, a refinement of, of bool. What I'm calling fuzzy is just the intersection of true and false. And then bottom, the bottom Boolean is top, arrow, top, arrow, bottom. Where this, if you remember, this was the type that neither true nor false had that type. So there's five equivalence classes. By equivalence class, I mean that, that uh, there's, there's other, um, if you look at all of the, the refinements of, of Boole, and uh, you know, R1 is equivalent to R2 if they're both subtypes of each other. So now, last time we saw that, that, okay, the system was really, you know, it was really simple. And the refinement types, they could say a little bit, but, you know, we didn't have principal types, for example, because of this <coughs> kind of, you know, kind of silly example with lambda x, x E even in the case where you have two different refinements which are not uh, subtypes of each other, then you, don't, you didn't have principal types. In this system, actually, you do have many times you have principal types, so long as you have a finite uh, set of atoms. So here, again, we're, you know, for today, we're going to take just two atomic refinements, top, uh, bottom and top. So in many cases, you, I mean, you're going to have principal types. So let's look at some of these principal types. And so we're going to continue with this example of the, the church booleans. And we can define conjunction and disjunction as operations on church booleans. Right? So... These are the church encodings. And you know, we can define not this is this is in the notes. And Okay, it's an exercise in the notes to find principal types for these terms. To find principal types in this, you know, in this um, intersection type refinement system, given that just when you have two atomic atoms. But so I want to do this exercise with you. Uh, 
to yeah, to give you, to give you a, a flavor of, of what what comes up with with principal types, what principal types look like in this system. So maybe yeah, no, we're we're, we're going to just jump into it and, and look at and okay, you know, I'm going to give you. I, I think I'm going to. I'm just going to show you the principal type of and, and then we'll we'll talk about it. And has this type. This is one of its the types that you can give and so it takes true, arrow true, arrow true, where true here is is this type. <coughs> right? And and bool is the type I R I R I. You can check that it has this type. If you write your, you know, your, your bidirectional type checker, then you'll be able to automatically check that AND has this type. Uh, but here's some other types that it has. So it also has the type true, arrow false, arrow false. OK. Uh, which, OK, you know, you're starting to see this, this makes sense. Well, you know, the co if, the, the if P is true and Q is true, then AND P, Q should be true. If P is true and false is true, then, then, Q, then P and Q should be false. Uh, but it also, ha it also has this type. So it has the type true arrow fuzzy, arrow fuzzy, and true arrow bottom, arrow bottom. And, okay, false arrow top. I'm going to just put the indices to make clear this is bottom and top at the type bool. Arrow false. So let's talk about, you know, what, is, what does this type mean? And you can think about it. When we evaluate the conjunction, it's going to, it's going to test the first Boolean. It's going to test P. And if it's false, then it's going to, you know, there's short circuit evaluation, so it's going to return false. So it doesn't matter what the, the second argument is. We don't have to know that it's true or false. It doesn't matter. So we're just going to put top there. And it's going to return uh, false. And then we also have fuzzy <coughs> arrow true arrow fuzzy and bottom arrow top arrow bottom this is the principal type of the term so none of if you look at each of the conjunctions none of them is a subtype of the other one uh, and so you know and also has other types like for example and has the type uh, let's say uh, false arrow true arrow false it has this type but false arrow true arrow false is a subtype at this type b r b r b of the of the type this one false arrow top <coughs> arrow false because true is a subtype of yeah true Okay. Uh, right, right. Mm. Oh, yeah, yes, sorry, you're right. 
So <coughs> this is the principal type, so it should be a subtype of the other types. So this thing is a subtype of this thing. We project component, which is a subtype of this, because true is a subtype of top. <coughs> okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, so you can you can work out the the principal type of or and and not. Uh, but the thing that you can you can already see here is that the principal type somehow tells us about the the execution or the evaluation of, of the 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 program. So you know what would happen you can what you can think about what happened what would happen if we wrote a different version of and with right to left evaluation instead of left to right evaluation. Uh, would it have the same principal type? And the answer is, is no, uh, because, because th this principal type reflects the, the uh, reflects the, the left to right evaluation of the, of the program, of the, of the conjunction. So, okay. So, so this is a, a, a general. This is a general phenomenon in, with, with, principal types. And. You know, let, let, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about type checking again and, and type inference. Why did I say this is not a principal type? Because uh, a principal type ha is the ha has to be a subtype of all the other types that you can give <coughs> the, the term. So a, a principal type is we, we can give it the type R. R is the principal type if it, if the T has the type R and if T has a type S, then R is a subtype of S. Okay. So in this case, the term has this type, but this type is not a subtype of this one. So, so that's why it's not principal. <coughs> so, okay. So, so type checking. Last time we saw that there were two kind of approaches to, to type checking. One was, you know, we saw that the system didn't have, it didn't have principal types, but you could still compute principal type schemes. Uh, where you, you can find a formal definition of what, a, what principal type scheme means in the notes. But basically we can, we, can, we can abstract what are the constraints on the atoms that have to be in order to, for this term to, to type. That was one approach, and then another approach was instead of trying to get to get principal types or principal type schemes to, to use bidirectional typing, where we just get principal types for the neutral subterms. Now for intersection types, the, the first approach, the, the, the inference approach, is much less palatable. And and one of the reasons for that is you can see it is here, you know, with this this kind of thing. There's a, okay, so this is with conjunction. And you see it already has this really big type here. If you look at more complicated expressions, like you know, in the notes there's just a little formula combining ands and ors with a, a few formulas and it has a bigger principal type. So you get really large types. You also, you can think that Okay, this is reflecting lots of details of the of the implementation of of conjunction. 
why should the, the type expose that if the programmer doesn't want that? So there's many things here which maybe the programmer doesn't care about the implementation. It doesn't care that it's left to right versus right to left and or that also, okay, these fuzzy booleans. Do you actually have fuzzy booleans in, in your language? Well, in the, if you, if you consider this actual, the actual language, the simply type lambda calculus, if you, look, if you look at the closed terms of type bool, this church boolean, no, there aren't any fuzzy booleans. There's nothing which is both true, has the type true and the type false. So, so there's lots of things here. Uh, you know, maybe it's an interesting type, but maybe the programmer is not interested in, in having such a precise type. So from a practical point of view, this pure inference approach, it, it, uh, you know, it, ha it has problems for when you, when you have intersection types, but there's also a very strong, another very strong uh, theoretical problem with, with pure type inference for intersection types. And that actually gets to one of the, the historical origins of, of intersection types was in studies of normalization of, of uh, lambda calculus. So I was describing you a uh, type refinement system over simply typed lambda calculus. But, but originally, intersection types were studied, you could, you could say, as a refinement system over pure lambda calculus. And, and there, there's connections between normalization. Uh, you could characterize weak normalization or strong normalization as different intersection typing disciplines. And it makes it be undecidable. Typing is undecidable. So I'm going to explain to you how a similar property uh, works here. And, and the, basic, the basic idea is that, well, OK, you're used to talking about type preservation or, or you know, also called subject reduction. So, you know, suppose that T has the type R in a given context and T evaluates to T prime then T prime has type R, okay? But now there's also something which is called subject expansion or you know, anti-preservation or something, which says that if T steps to T prime, and T prime has type R, then T has type R. So if T steps to a term with a given type, then T has that type. And well, OK, we don't talk about this so much because in many, you know, most systems don't have this property, but intersection type systems uh, many times have this property, and the <coughs> so it turns out that the the system we will find <laughs> does have this property, and I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just show you sketch how that how that works. The, so there's a proof in the in the notes, but the basic idea is uh, so we have to prove you know there's substitution lemma which says that if u has type r and if t has type s with the assumption x having type r then with u substituted for x has type r, that's substitution, which we know and love. Then there's also converse substitution, 
which is what you need to get subject expansion. And that says that if, well, it's the converse of this. So if pi, if t with u substituted for x has type r, then there exists an s. <coughs> uh, OK, sorry. I made a typo here. It should be an s. Right, T has type S under assumption R, then you substitute U, it still has type S. Here, T, where we substituted U for X, has type S. But then there is exists some R that we can give, such that we can give U the type R in the context. And now if we abstract, now T has type S with, the, with X as a variable of type R. So let me see how much time we have. I think I'm not, I'm not going to prove this to you, but there's a proof in the, in the notes. But so you, know, you can use the converse substitution lemma to prove subject expansion. You can use substitution to prove subject reduction in, in, the, in the usual way. And so, OK, now we have both subject reduction and subject expansion. So that's, you know, that's fun. Because you know, if we have both of these, then that means that if you know, we have the property that if t is beta equivalent to t prime and t prime has type R, then t has type R. So typing is closed under, under beta equality. And I know that, has, that has big consequences. Uh, so th these, these kinds of results hold in also in the, in the traditional intersection type systems where it's the, the refinements of pure lambda calculus. And beta, deciding beta equivalence is, is undecidable. A beta, beta equivalence is undecidable. So typing is undecidable. In simply typed lambda calculus, it's decidable. You, you can, because it has the normalization property. So you can normalize terms and, and, and test equality. But it's still very, very hard. So there is an old result of Rick Statman, which says that um, <coughs> deciding beta equivalence for simply typed lambda calculus is is so-called non-elementary. So there, if you take two to the two to the two to the so on, where this is any fixed mm, number of times, then you can't you, you can't bound the number of of steps to uh, to reduce a simply typed term by any fixed tower of exponentials. <coughs> so it's Therefore, deciding therefore deciding the typing relation is, is non-elementary. And why is that? Well, we saw. <coughs> That in the case, if you look at the if you look at 
closed booleans, right? Did, are they still up there? No. Um, but we saw that true has the type true, and that false has the type false. But that true does not have the type false, and false does not have the type true. And therefore, if we have an arbitrary expression, T of, of type um, bool, of underlying type bool, you know, so we're given this, then we're going to ask, does T have the type true? We ask, does, does T have the type true? And uh, if it does, then we know that it normalizes to, to, to true. And if it doesn't, then we know that it normalizes to false. Because, it, because we know that if, it, if it's going to, it either normalizes to true or to false. And if it normalizes to true, then it's going to have to have the type true. It's always go we're going to be able to give it the type true. So OK, so, so that shows that. Deciding this uh, typing relationship, well, it's possible, but it's really hard, theory, at least in, in theory. So, so this pure type inference, in the, in the case of intersection types, is the, it does not work. It's, it, it's, it seems to be a bad idea. OK, so what can we do about that? Well, of course, you know, bidirectional typing. And you know, as you saw last time, bidirection typing is a really simple idea. So we have this grammar of neutral and normal. And I showed you, and it's also in the notes, how the, you know, we can just refine the typing rules to make some of them be synthesizing a type and some of them be, be checking against the type. So here, the, uh, so the introduction rules are going to be taking a normal term, and they're going to be checking. So to check. M against R1 intersect R2. We check it against R1. We check it against R2. Also, in the zero area case, uh, you know, checking against top is trivial. Now, for the eliminations, If we syn synthesize the type R1 intersect R2, then we can also synthesize the type R1. <coughs> and we can also synthesize the type R2. So again, we have two judgments, the checking judgment and the synthesizing judgment. And all of the, the same rules that, that I showed you last time. So we just extend the system with, with these rules. And it's, 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 um, we still have the property that we can type check normal terms. Uh, you know, terms which are beta normal, we can type check them uh, without needing any annotations. And OK, so please uh, see if you can, if you can uh, implement this. Implement the bidirectional, you know, implement bidirectional typing for the the very simple language that we uh, we the, the very simple type refinement system that we looked at last time, and then and and then extend it to intersection types. 
uh, there's a little bit of subtlety with, with now when you look, go to non-normal terms. So remember the rule that we had last time for annotations says, well, we're going to extend the grammar by a sort of virtual coercion from normal to neutral. And th this was where you can have beta redices by, uh, and the beta redices are, are associated with, with an annotation. <coughs> and the rule was that the annotated term synthesizes its annotation so long as it, that annotation checks. There, there's a little bit of, of uh, subtlety here um, with, with intersection types because the, the process of type checking is, is non-deterministic in a sense. So, so an example, you know, suppose that you have in your, you know, suppose I'm gonna just to make it more realistic, suppose that we have types of integers and type of reals which refine the, you know, the, the base type and now we have some operation plus which has the type int arrow int arrow int and it also has the type real arrow real arrow real or it has the intersection type <coughs> int arrow int arrow int and real arrow real arrow real and now uh, we want to show that want to show this and okay so uh, so this is a non-normal term we can we can give it this type but but how do we how do we check it in the bidirectional system we need to put some sort of annotation on this normal subterm because it's in a position where it's applied so it's in a position of being neutral and so we need to put an annotation on it uh, the problem is, okay, when we want to derive this, we wa when we want to derive uh, this conjunct, the int error int, we need to know that this subterm has the type int error int. And, but when we want to derive this conjunct, we need to show that it has the type, that this subterm has the type real error real. And you know, ni neither of these are, are subtypes of the other. And you might think, well, wh why don't we take the intersection? So maybe we can put the, the, that, uh, you know, give this term the intersection type, int arrow int, intersect real arrow real. But we can't actually, because it, it's, w I mean, what's going on is we're looking at x, in one case, we look at this term in the context that x has type int. Then we, then we can show that this, uh, this term has type int or int. And in the other case, we look at it in a different context where x has type real. And then we can show that it has type real arrow real. But in either of these cases, it doesn't have the intersection type. So we can't give it an intersection type. So it's really, it's, you know, there's some non-determinism there. And, and a, a solution kind of is, is what you do is you have multiple type annotations. So non-deterministic type annotations. And you pick one, okay? So I'm going to put multiple annotations on this subterm. Here I'm going to put, I'm going to annotate this with int arrow int, and also with real arrow real. And the appropriate one is going to be chosen according to to what you you know what what's the, the type in the context. 
Okay. So so you should you should implement that as well. Now, um, so how much Zena? How much time should I go? I mean, I, I could I could speak for for longer. Yeah. Okay. I, maybe I'll. I'll yeah. Ma maybe I'll. Ju I'll just say a few things. So. So one. You know. There's in the notes. There's an explanation of. Of. Uh, uh, the complexity of bidirectional typing. So. So I showed you that. That pure type inference without annotations is really bad complexity because it's equivalent to normalization of, of simply typed lambda calculus. Bidirectional typing, so or, or typing of normal terms, or, or bidirectional typing of, of non-normal terms is actually, it's still, it's in p-space, it turns out. And it's kind of cute to see why that is. Uh, so if, if you're you know, interested, you can see that in the notes. Uh, so p-space is actually, it's not great complexity, but it's better than, than being an arbitrary tower of exponentials. Uh, but the, just, I, I, so I just want to briefly talk about, you know, I, I've just shown you some idealized refinement systems, really two. I showed you the, you know, we, talk, we started with simply type lambda calculus, and we refined it first by adding an atomic subtype emulation, and now today by adding intersections. I want to talk a little bit about this work on, on refining ML and the issues that come up. And so one, one idea is, you know, ju just a practical, uh, you know, a very nice practical idea is so-called data sort refinements. And that's the idea that, okay, we can refine data types in ML. Like, one of the motivations you can think about that is, you know, often we, we program in ML and we, you know, we, we write these beautiful pattern matching functions, but many times the, the, um, you know, the data types we're using, they satisfy some extra invariants which aren't in the types. And so we know that certain cases are ruled out, but the, you will get these match uh, non-exhaustive warnings uh, because we, we didn't include some case which, will, which we knew was impossible, but it's not there in the type, so okay, you get these warnings uh, in ML, and that's that's one uh, motivation for it. But so that you know, data sort refinements are refinements of, of data types. So th this is one name for uh, for refinements of data types. There's a um, you know you can specify. I'll just give you an example. I'll give you some examples quickly, but in the link I sent you and in the notes, you can find you can find a link to an actual a couple systems. There's implementations of these, and that's probably the best way to uh, to learn about them is to to play with these systems. We define in ML syntax the data type of natural numbers. Well, now we can define a refinement of the natural numbers, the positive numbers, and it's just going to be, you know, S of something, right? We can define the even and the odd natural numbers as refinements of, of nat, where, you know, even is either zero or successor of an odd, and odd is successor of an even. Okay, so the, the you, you know, I'm not giving you formal rules for these, but but the intuition is 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 pretty clear. And so, you know, for example, if we write the predecessor function.
like this. If we write this in ML, we're going to get a warning, match non-exhaustive, because we didn't include the zero case. But, well, in a refinement type system, if we have these data sorts, we can say that Fred, <coughs> I'll put it as a comment in ML syntax, Fred has the type pause Aronat. We can check that Fred has the type pause error not. There's a system called CIDR that Rowan Davies, which will let you write this. And, and here you, can, you don't need a warning because you know that the zero case will not come up. And there's similar things like we can define plus in the usual way on, on, on natural numbers and we can give it the type even arrow, even arrow, even, intersect, even arrow, even, arrow, odd, arrow, odd, and so on. Uh, so that's data sorts. Uh, something else which comes up in, in ML, refining ML. So it turns out that, that the intersection introduction rule that I, I showed you is actually unsound in ML because of the so-called uh, value restriction or you need the value restriction it's related to the to the you know this uns connection between polymorphism and and why it needs a value restriction in ml it's essentially the same reason so you know if you an example is if i write this program in ml so i take uh, you know a reference containing one, and well, one, <coughs> one is, a, is, an, is a natural number, and therefore this is ref of a, is, you know, it's a nat ref, but one is also a positive number, so therefore this is also a pos ref, and now I'm gonna assign zero to x because I project the, this type that it has the type nat ref and well now I return the value of x and it has well x has this intersection type and so I use this component and I say that it, uh, it's positive so this is unsound um, you know, in fact you know th this is unsound in the sense that x is not going to be positive in it's going to be zero. So to rule this out, you need a value restriction on the intersection introduction. So you restrict <coughs> this to be a value, so something which is already fully evaluated, and ref of something is not evaluated because <coughs> it's, going to, to, it's going to evaluate to a label, allocate a, a reference at one time. And for the same reason, essentially the same reason, the, you know, the distributivity rule that I showed you that we talked about for a while is actually unsound. <coughs> this is unsound for call by value with effects. Essentially for the same reason where you can think of S being a unit type. So these being thunks. If I have a thunk to something of type R1 and I have a thunk to something of type R2, that doesn't necessarily give me a thunk to something of an intersection type. Now, uh, I, I could talk a little bit about union types, but it might take me 10 minutes, maybe... <laughs> okay, so so that's uh, that's uh, that's it for now. Uh, please, yeah, you you can you can take a, a look at a little bit at the notes uh, to read a little bit about about union types and and check out the systems. Uh, so yeah, you should check out the uh, CIDR system. There's a link in the in the notes. Rowan Davies, and, and that's it. Okay, next time we're going to talk about something else. Okay. <laughs>